How's everyone doing today? Welcome back to On The Ball and welcome back to some more Premier League content for you guys today. What we're going to be looking at is Chelsea. We're going to be diving deep into Chelsea and seeing if they are in crisis or not. And obviously, results don't look good for Maurizio Pochettino's men. Only one win so far this season and that win coming against Luton. Um, and let's see who else they played. They drew with Liverpool in the first game of the season, which is, you know, not a bad result at all. Losing 3-1 to West Ham, beating Luton 3-0, losing to Nottingham Forest at home 1-0, drawing with Bournemouth 0-0, and losing to Aston Villa by one goal to nil. Zero goals scored in their last three games. Not something that you would usually associate with a Maurizio Pochettino team who prides himself in um, attacking intent, attacking numbers. Do you think they're in crisis? 100% I think they're in crisis because at the end of the day, I know it's the start of a project and I know that um, obviously they've got a lot of young players and it's always going to take time for them to maybe st start to see the results. But if you look at their general form, into you know, you take the calendar year 2023, there are in 29 games they've got 25 points and if and i know this is a new season and you want you if you're a chelsea fan you kind of want to forget that the last season even happened and you want to put you want to put that at the back of your mind but i think it still matters when you when you take the overall picture of where chelsea are at i know it's a new project but still the same the results are not uh, are not improving this season and for me, I know they're playing well. Sorry, not playing well. I know their maybe performances are not maybe represented in the results in terms of they might have been creating more chances and missing a lot of chances. And Chelsea fans can point to that and say, look, if we keep playing this way, things will improve. But I think you look at the squad and the, they have good players, but it, do you trust these players to get them out of the current mire that they're in? And Pochettino, as much as he's going to call for patience and call for time, Chelsea historically have been very choppy and uh, chop and change their managers very frequently. They don't usually give their managers maybe the time that, that the managers need um, to maybe turn things around. And I think if this form continues, I mean, I, I'm I'm worried for him because, for, to be honest, because as much as he's going to want the time to, ch to turn things around, I'm generally worried about. The, the the Chelsea fans are already starting to get on his back and 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 get very frustrated with the situation. Maybe they're throwing their frustrations at the club at Pochettino because obviously he's the manager at the moment. But how can when you've got twenty five points out of the last twenty nine Premier League games, regardless of the situation, when you're if you're Chelsea Football Club, where you've been in the last f uh, ten years or so, what kind of club you've been, that has to be like not just small alarm bells these are massive like th this is time to panic surely when when the form is this bad and yes you've gone into the season and it's supposed to be starting afresh but you've you're now 14th in the premier league you've lost three of your first six games and drawn the other two you statistically had the easiest start out of anyone um in the premier league as well and the results are like this and i'm looking at the team and i think it's a good team but is it like I don't see where the goals are coming from? That's the problem, and that's and their biggest problem right now is scoring goals. And I, I'm really I'm I'm not worried because I'm a Spurs fan, so like I'm enjoying their downfall. But if I'm a Chelsea fan, you've got to be concerned about. Yes, the performances might still improve, but where are these goals going to come from? What What do you think that Chelsea's kind of remit was before the season? Where would you think they wanted had to, to be finish? top six minimum? Had to be, in my opinion. Had to be, had to, of course. Oh, you spent four, twelve last Had season. to be. They sp they, they've done it before, where they finished tenth under Mourinho and yeah, then they won and won the Chelsea. league. Completely but yeah, but they, I'm just saying, just because you finish mid table doesn't mean the remit for next season isn't to get back to where you were. And you point Pochettino, you spent four hundred million. I heard Chelsea fans talking about a title challenger beginning of the season. Yeah, that was. A I know it was a crazy, but still. Okay, that was mad, but still, I reckon they were looking at top four. I don't like no European football as well. You add, add that to the mix; they're going to have time on the training ground. I think that Bowley was thinking they would at least get top six. I reckon they were aiming for top four this season, even, and I think that I think they they thought at the beginning of the season minimum top six, one hundred percent. Top six isn't a stretch from this season. It's not a big stretch uh, to to think Chelsea can finish in the top six. Yes, well, I know. seven points behind. I know, but it's only six games in. That's already a big gap, though. Yeah, but six games, anything can happen. But over usually, the but of the season. usually, when when we talk about early on in the season, you look at the table and you say, yeah, it's early days. 
um, usually that's usually that's because there's a very little points difference in the whole table at this stage because of the minimum games. But they're already seven points behind sixth, and if you look at the top four, they're nine points behind top four after six games, and and. They're, that form is going to have to turn around very quickly. It Otherwise, it, they're, they're very seriously, um, they're, they're very seriously um, going to um, come out of contention very soon if this uh, season, if this form doesn't improve. And yes, obviously, it's not still look six games in, so there's a lot of football to be played, and they can still turn the situation around. But that gap doesn't look like it's getting smaller anytime soon. That's the yeah, problem. It's true. It does look like it's getting bigger rather than it's getting smaller. I completely agree with that. But what you're saying about kind of the last 25 games or whatever it is the stat is that you know they've only picked up wins against six different teams or or something and even in the last 38 games I, I think that's right and I think um, in terms of panic you're saying now is the time to panic I mean they've already panicked in the past uh, 25 games they panicked and sacked Tuchel they panicked and sacked Potter and what you're telling me they're gonna sack, uh, they're gonna have to panic and sack Pochettino as well at some point they're gonna need to stick with something and stick with a project uh, and see it through and if they don't then that's when they're going to see themselves not being able to to flourish and move forward. The only way that this Chelsea, this very young Chelsea side, by the way, moves forward is if they stick with a project and if they stick with their man. And yes, I know results have been absolutely terrible. Nowhere near Chelsea were going to be. And I'm, I'm all here for it. I'm loving every second of it. No, I'm not going to lie. But... The fact of the matter is they've got crazy injuries uh, that have mounted up. Reese James, their captain, he's been out for the last couple of games. Um, and Kunku, who was their summer star signing, um, has come in and he was the, supposed to be the guy that was supposed to source the goals for them. He's out until uh, December time, mid-December time. Lavia, who they've brought in, is injured. Fafana, I mean, every time he comes back, he gets out injured for a long time. I mean, they've got so many injuries I'm to not contend with. Badia Shields injured, Madueke's injured, uh, Chukamwenka's injured, uh, Chalabar, Gusto suspended. I mean, they've got so much to contend with, uh, Chelsea. And yes, you're, you're completely right. What they're showing at the moment in terms of results is nowhere near good enough. But from what I'm seeing on the football pitch, I'm seeing a team that is growing in a philosophy and that is just not putting the ball in the back of the net. And if they did have an out-and-out -out goal scorer, if Nkunku was there, I think we wouldn't even be sitting here having this conversation. I agree that they do have a lot of injuries, but I'm looking at the team, right? Uh, the, the team they played against um, Villa on um, on last game, mm -hmm. they had Sanchez in goal, Gusto, De Sassi, Silva and Colwell. That's a pretty good back four. That's not only really what the injuries Reese James gets in there, really, um, pot uh, potentially. And maybe uh, the centre-back said De Sassi, but they just signed De Sassi uh, this Chill summer. Well. Yeah, Chill was on the bench. Yeah. So they, that's not an injury. He was on the bench. So in midfield, Caicedo, uh, Gallagher and Enzo, 250, 200 million pound midfielders in there. Up front, you've got Madrid, another hundred million pound winger. You got Sterling, you got Jackson. So I don't like. I'm not looking at a team like. I don't look at that eleven. I think that eleven decimated my injuries. I'm looking fine. eleven, and that's a strong eleven. So yeah, I don't think injuries is an excuse. That's fine. But you're the one that said earlier in this video that it takes time to instill a project. It takes time it does. to to gel all these players together. And we're talking about a team in crisis after six games. They because it's not, but it's not just the six games. You've got to look at the. It, they are. They have to be in crisis because in the last twenty nine games, they've got twenty five points as a club. You're supposed to start from fresh when a new manager comes in. You are. You can't. But it. It can't. I know it. You're. You're supposed to start from fresh. But when you, if you take that the whole of twenty twenty three, and then you add in the fact, like for example, if you look at Spurs, right, this season. We've com the, the the project has accelerated quite quickly and we can already see that things are moving very positively so you can kind of chuck away what happened last season because clearly we're going they're going di different direction but Chelsea are not clearly going in a different direction to last season I it's agree. very similar to last season I agree the, the problems this season are exactly the same problems they were having last season there's no difference in the problems so when you so the difference between the Tottenham project and this even though you could say well you can't why wouldn't you add in the, the problems Tottenham had last season to this season it's because we've clearly, we've completely flipped the way we're playing and it's completely changed. And you can't even, we don't look like the same team. Chelsea do look like the same team they did mm -hmm. last season. Not much, apart from maybe the Lampard era. I mean, if I take the Potter era, which they had, they, again, I, it's very similar, playing really nice football. The XG was lovely, but they couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. And that's exactly the same problems I'm What's seeing this season. To? The lack of quality in the front line.
Has and, to be. And you've got to say, like, once Nkunku does come back, that problem you can't, should be solved. No, you can't just rely on one player. You can't just rely on I'm one player to solve the last three years. Yeah, but, that, yeah, but look at where we've, we ended up eighth last season. You know mm. what I mean? You, you can't rely on this. First, when Nkunku's never played, I'm not saying... He's and a, it's not just relying on one player. You got you need the whole team to create the chances to keep tight at the back. You know what I mean? It's a whole team effort, but they need that final piece of the jigsaw. I don't think you uh, in Kunku you can rely on a player who's never played in the Premier League. Look, I agree, he's a great player, and I'm sure he'll be great in the Premier League. And once he's back fitter, he will make a difference. But to say he's like this smoking gun, and if they just had in Kunku, everything will be hunky dory. I don't buy that. I don't. I can't think. I don't think you just don't rely think on one score player. more goals if in Kunku's there. Maybe they maybe they'll score more goals. We won't solve all their problems. What's their problems? Their their problem is they they first of all they're consi- they're they're not having enough control of games from a defensive point of view, and they can't put the ball in the back of the net. They're they're creating chances, but I, I don't think in, just in Kunku can solve it all. Like yeah. is is he that good that he's going to drag them to exactly like he's going to get all the goals and they're going to win games? He's a finisher. He's a, he's not he's a good player. Don't get me wrong. And he got a lot of goals in the Bundesliga. Werner was a finisher. Didn't mean he got goals. He's going to get Werner wasn't, wasn't playing in that position in Kunku. If you play him instead of Jackson, right in the number nine, we're, we're he's we're a both, false nine. Okay, fine. But we know that he gets goals and we know that he's a good finisher. He's a brilliant finisher in Kunku. And if if you were saying that they're creating no many chances. That XG is so high. If these chances fall to Nkunku instead of Jackson, you would expect them to score a lot more goals. But it's not just that. Where it, the, 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 the problem for Chelsea is not... They are creating chances, but they're creating chances. And when they're missing them, then... They're not creating chances consistently throughout the game. So they'll create chances um, in like the first half and they'll have bright starts. And then once once they miss a few, the confidence starts to drop. Then the chances do seem to dry up in the second half. And that confidence issue is also a massive problem. Now, just putting in Kunku in there is not going to solve that. Yes, he might get a few more goals and he might get more goals and maybe he's going to be more clinical, hopefully, for them than Jackson. But he's not a pure number nine. He's a false nine. So I, I don't... Th- and, and I think he's going to improve the team and I think he's a great player. But I don't think just putting Nkunku in there just solves all their problems otherwise I can say what well, you can they would should have kept Lukaku then because he would have scored more goals than Jackson would that solved all their problems I don't think it would have just having a good goal scorer in there who's going to be a better finisher I think there's deeper rooted issues there at Chelsea at the moment because the because it's the the problems are the same they're not changing so there's got to be something deeper than just um not not having a goal but scorer I on think, the team I think that has been the problem is too much change that has been the problem, and that's what the deep-rooted problem is. There's been too much change. First sign of trouble, Tuchel's gone. First sign of trouble, Potter's gone. Um, a manager needs to be able to spend time with his squad, um, grow his squad, get his get those players better, make Jackson better at finishing. You know, like Jackson is a good player. He was. He's, we've seen uh, Jack. Maybe he didn't. He hasn't scored great goals, uh, a lot of goals in his career. But even in preseason, we saw. Um, you know, he was. They were playing different football in preseason. I don't understand why they're not playing the same kind of football and formations that they were playing in preseason. And it did get the best out of Jackson. I'm not sure what's happened at the beginning of this season where he's getting the chances. He's looking great outside the six yard box. But when he gets those chances, he's fluffing his lines every time. But I think that crisis it looks like a crisis because obviously they've only lost one game they've only won one game this season and obviously if you go back and look at last season and you look at the last 38 games they are literally in relegation form but i think if you take the caveat of poch only being there for the six games starting from fresh performances don't look too bad I think he needs the time to evolve these players and get these players firing on all cylinders and we know he can do it but if poch is in the same position let, like, I don't know what game what game week Potter got sat last season. I think maybe it was what game week twenty eight. Let's say um, I don't know, but let's mm. say it was like ten games to go. He yeah. got sacked, and they were what in twelfth position. If, uh, if Potch is in the same position in after twenty eight games, third of, of po- April, whatever. That third is. of April, so that's about ten games to go. If Pot if Potch is in the same position as Potter was last season, does he also get the boot? That's what I'm saying. I don't think he should. I've said but it. But Willie, that's uh, the question. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I mean, that's a big, big... Um, if they do, then they're stupid. They're, they're just absolutely stupid. And th- these problems all stem from the top. Like, I think I think they could be onto a good thing with this squad that they've got here and the manager that they've got. I think if they stick with it and they stick with their guns, they are going to improve, in my opinion. I, I don't even think it's a maybe. I think they're definitely going to improve. It's all about hanging through the bad times and seeing if they can come out the other end. And if they can come out the other end, 
I do see a future for Chelsea. But if Bowley, um, you know, does what he has been doing so far and just sacking at the first sign of trouble, then I don't see any light at the end of the tunnel because they need they need a project man to see through a project instead of bringing someone in and just sacking them at the first sign of trouble. You don't bring in someone to head a project and then sack him um, in that same season. It just doesn't make sense. The problem they've got, though, is the way they've done their financials. Is Yes, it's clever on the outside because they've given all these long contracts and they can amortise over a long period. But what it banks on is, to, um, is Chelsea have to get Champions League football. That's how this works financially. If they're not getting Champions League football, this is all going to break down and they're going to be v struggling badly to to work with FFP if they're not financially getting um, getting Champions League football and getting that Champions League money. And if and it there's going to be a big challenge at this point getting Champions League football this they season. They need it this year or they need it at some point? They need it every year. year. They need it every year. So what happens if they getting, don't get it this year? They, they're going to be struggling to, to um, keep up with FFP because the, the money that they spent this season is going, to, is going on to next season. It's spread out, but it's going to be building up at some point and they need to be making that money off Champions League football. They need to be showing results on the pitch for this to work. Otherwise, they're in big trouble and they're, not, and they're going to either risk not complying or um, they're not going to have money to improve on, on the team in future years so they are under pressure to yes maybe this season they don't there's not necessarily they have to get top four but they need to be getting European football and if and if that's missing out then is Boley going to be look if you do not gave me Champions League football you're out is he going to have that kind of mentality and if they if he does do that when is it ever going to improve uh, when is it ever going to get the, the, this project ever going to get the time to improve and that's why I'm saying they're in crisis because at the moment it's a new season, but it's the same thing, and nothing's changing. It's only six games, but it's it's six games, but it's the same problems. It's the same problem. It's a new and, manager to try and, and solve those still, problems. But the, he, at the moment, he's struggling to solve it. Yeah, he's after struggling. Six games. Yeah, after six games, he's struggling to solve it. But so it's a bit of a crisis. It's a very small sample size, very small. And yes, I know they've had the easiest game so far after the first six games, and they are not going well. It's not good. It's not a good situation at Chelsea. I'm not saying that, but I feel like the crisis is going to come. If if they sack Pochettino. But, I think that's when the crisis. No, but comes. the thing is, like, things couldn't get much worse than they, than they did they last season. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying last season, right? It was that bad. It was literally, apart from like a relegation battle, it couldn't have gotten gone much worse for Chelsea last season, mm. and. That was such a low bar to try and improve from, and they still haven't improved from that low, low, that low bar. They can't haven't seemed to improve from that even from last season. That has to be a massive concern. That it has to a, be. Of course, it's a concern, but they need to stick with it. They need to. I'm not saying they shouldn't. Them, I'm they not saying they, they shouldn't. need to give. The, so, so how do you? You know what I mean? Like, if you're saying they're in crisis now, yeah. under Pochettino after six games, then what are they supposed to do to get themselves out of crisis? They, they, look, what they should do is obviously give it time and just ride it out. But it doesn't mean they're not in a crisis. They have to be under severe pressure here. They have to be because they have because they they're the 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 results over a sustained period of time now have been that bad. Maybe we the have pressure a pressure idea to... of crisis then. Well, what because, like, my crisis? idea of crisis is there's, no, there's just no way out and they need to make a massive change in the management or something like that. That's my idea of crisis where things need to change very much in maybe the manager's section right this second. And I don't think that's the case. No, I don't think. I'd look, they sh they shouldn't change the manager after six games. That would be silly. That would be a stupid thing. But as a club, they I think they are in crisis considering how bad the results have been over a long sustained period of time. Mm. They're literally relegation form for the last thirty eight games. They yeah. would have been relegated if you took the points out of their last thirty eight games. Yeah, I understand they would have been relegated in every season every season of the Premier League. That has to be a crisis. That has to be something where the, where the, 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 the hierarchy, like how the hell is this happening? How the hell have we got this so wrong? And I guess the only thing they can do is trust Pochettino and wait out. But that's got, they have to be, there has to be massive pressure on Chelsea to turn this form around. Look, he's coming, look, there's, you're absolutely right. He's come into a club in crisis, Pochettino. He has. But the fact of the matter is, I feel like they've got, good cogs in there that can kind of get them out of it i think they've got a good squad maybe not an amazing squad that's going to finish top four but i think they've got a good squad that definitely can finish in the top six whether it's a stretch or not this season is another matter they've got another mat they've got a manager in that likes to work with the type of squad that he's got young fresh up-and-coming players they've just got way too many to balance all at the same time but i feel like once Pochettino kind of gets to grips with this squad, finds out who his best 11 is, I do think things are going to get dramatically better and quite quickly.
Mm. But right now, obviously, it looks like it's a terrible, terrible situation, which it is when you look at the last year of Chelsea Football Club. But it doesn't mean that there's no way out of it because I do think there is a way out. I'm not saying there's no way out, but um, because I think Pochettino, I, I, we know Pochettino over his time at Tottenham, and he had a fairly, I mean, it wasn't this bad, but it wasn't too dissimilar, his start uh, to life at Tottenham. And obviously it did get better, and the next year, obviously things dramatically improved, and um, we went on to see Spurs really thrive under his methods, and maybe Chelsea would be the same with Chelsea. But Chelsea just have to have the patience to stick with it uh, and stick and stick with these bad results but right now i can understand why chelsea fans are very very worried about what's going on because te like te like factually the way this team is going like it's 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 who knows how low they could go at this point it's incredible yeah they just need someone to stick the ball in the back of the net like jackson and sterling are getting so many um opportunities every single game and I don't know what is going on, but the finishing is just so poor. They just need to concentrate on this better finishing. They'll be winning more games. It's as simple as that, in my opinion. Mm. Literally. Right. So, anyway, we're all here for it anyway. So, uh, that's that's the main thing. Yeah. But uh, let us know. Do you think Chelsea are in crisis in the comment section below? Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll see you.